So this video lesson is all about solving what we call inequalities. Now up until this point in the equation solving chapter, we've just looked at uh, expressions that are joined by what we call an equal sign, right? Something like x plus 7 is equal to 16. And as long as the comparison here is an equal sign, then we end up with an equation. But what we do to solve equations can translate into things that you've probably seen before that are called inequalities. And to get the difference between equations and inequalities, think about this particular scenario here. Let's say that you're baking cookies for a New Year's celebration and want to bring at least 100 with you because you know it's going to be a massive celebration. If you've already baked 40, we can ask the question, how many more do you need to make? So go ahead, pause the video, write some thoughts in your notebook about this, um, and then come back when you're ready to consider a particular way of looking at this, and then use this to derive the idea of an inequality. So one of the things you might have noticed is that if you've baked 40, and you bake 60 more, the 60 seems to be an important number here because that gets you exactly to that 100 cookie mark. But what's different, or I should say, um, we can look at this and identify some things that make this problem different from ones that we worked with when we were talking about equations. So go ahead, pause the video for a few seconds, see if you can recognize the phrasing in this problem that makes it different from the ones before, and then we'll use that to jump off into inequalities. Well, the key phrase here that makes it different from an equation, we don't need exactly 60 cookies. We had the words at least. We want at least 100 cookies uh, to take with you to the New Year's celebration. So if you've already baked 40 and you bake 60 more, that's great. That gets you to 100. If you bake 80 more, that's great because 120 is at least 100. If you bake 75 more, that's also great. If you bake 50 more, though, that doesn't get you to the point where you want. So what we need here is not exactly 60 cookies. We need at least 60 cookies. Out uh, On top of the ones that you've already made to be able to bring with you to the New Year's celebration. And this is different from the equation because the equations tell us that we would need exactly a particular number where inequalities tell us that there is a target number, but it's not exactly that target. Either we are comfortable with numbers that are greater than that target, or we're comfortable with numbers that are less than that target. And so rather than two expressions being connected with an equal sign, inequality is what we get when you compare two expressions uh, using what we call inequality symbols, so that one is set to be greater than or perhaps equal to the other. Go ahead, pause the video, write down this definition of inequality, and come back when you're ready to move on. So by taking two expressions and setting it so that one is greater than the other, that means we've created this comparison where one va the value of one expression is greater and the value of the second expression is then lesser than the other. So it could be by using particular inequality signs that we are also looking for uh, a number where the two values are equal, but we want it not to be in perfect balance so that the two values are identically the same, like in an equal sign. What we're looking for instead is a particular set of off balance. Um, and so there are four different symbols that we can use with inequalities. We have a less than and a greater than. We have a less than or equal to and a greater than or equal to. Go ahead, pause the video, copy down these four symbols as well as their uh, phrases and quotes below them. Come back when you are ready to move on. Now there are a lot of ways that we can think about how to know which side is the greater symbol, uh, which, which side is meant to be the greater value. If it's just two numbers you're comparing, then it's obvious which side is the greater value. Um, I know in elementary schools, a lot of times, uh, one of the tricks that's learned is to think of uh, Pac-Man or an alligator or something like that, where the open side of a mouth is pointed towards the greater number. Now, all of those, that's a, that's a nice sort of trick to remembering what direction the inequality uh, looks at, but when we actually get to reading inequalities involving variables and looking at them and understanding them, uh, that sort of alligator idea isn't quite as helpful as it is when we're just looking at two numbers. So it's important to us when we're looking at these that we are able to read them from left to right uh, the same way that we read other types of phrases. So 
x plus 7 we read as x plus 7 because left to right we have x plus 7. And the same thing is true with inequalities. So we can have things like x less than 3, and how we read that is from left to right. x is less than 3. And we always read left to right. We can read inequalities backwards, and their idea is still the same. Um, but in terms of right side, uh, opposite symbol, and then left side. But what we really want to do is be able to read them from left to right. x is less than 3. And we read an inequality based on the side that's on the left. So if the open side is greater, then the inequality over here becomes is greater than. The inequality in the bottom right, then, is greater than or equal to, because we've added the little half of the equal sign there that says, OK, equal to is also OK. In greater than, though, two values cannot be equal. So if x is greater than 10, x cannot be equal to 10. That's one of the important limitations that we are putting on that uh, inequality, and the one in the lower left is less than or equal to because it has the or equal sign, and from left to right it's lesser side, greater side. So one of the things we can do um, after reading an in, in inequality is setting up uh, just get examples of numbers that make the inequality true. So what I uh, want you to do is pause the video, read these inequalities as they are, and give three examples of numbers that make the inequalities true. What are three numbers? That are less than seven. What are three numbers uh, that you know use those two uh, other inequalities there too? Before I read them for you, so go ahead, pause the video, uh, read those inequalities, practice uh, reading from left to right, uh, and then write three numbers that make it true, and come back when you're ready to move on. So from left to right, we have x is less than 7, x is greater than negative 5, and x is less than or equal to 0. So for x is less than 7, as long as the number, a positive number that you've written down is less than 7, 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, all of those things, 0 uh, is less than 7, any negative number is going to be less than 7, all of those make that true. For x to be greater than negative 5, that's the second one, we can have some negative numbers. They need to be small negative numbers, like negative 4, negative 2.1, negative 1.6. You know, negative 6 is not greater than negative 5. Negative 6 is less than negative 5. So be careful with negative numbers and how those rules of less than and greater than work. Also, 0 and any positive number that we could possibly want, those are all... Uh, solutions to x is greater than negative 5. All of those make it true. And then for x to be less than or equal to 0, we have any negative number, any negative number, and also 0. If you wrote down a positive number, that is not a number that is less than or equal to 0. Any negative number works as well as 0. So when it comes not just to saying these are some uh, values of x that make the inequality true, sometimes we have something a little more complicated, like x plus 12 is less than 17. Now, unlike an equation where the two values are exactly in balance, you can see from the scale on the screen that the two sides of this inequality are slightly out of balance. But we follow the exact same rules because we're using the same processes as solving an equation to make sure that the solution of our inequality is exactly what it was before. We are preserving balance balance in an equation, and in a way you can think about it as preserving a very particular type of imbalance. Because solving the inequality x plus 12 is less than 17 will give us a solution in the form of an inequality that tells us about every value of x that makes that true. So you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide as long as you do the exact same thing to the other side. You can't add 2 to one side and add 4 to the other. We need to, if we add 2 to the left side, we add 2 to the right side. If we multiply by 3 on the right side, we multiply by 3 on the left side. All of those familiar rules for equations must be true. So in this particular inequality, we look at it the exact same way we did with uh, the equations. We have an x plus 12 on the left-hand side. We want to get rid of that plus 12, do the inverse operation. So we subtract from both sides. 
and we get 17 minus 12 is 5. The inequality sign just drops in this case. And so we have x is less than negative 5. This tells us every single value of x that we can add to 12 and end up with a value that is less than 17. Every number that makes this true is also going to make our original inequality true. And that's why we have to follow the exact same rules that we do for equations so that our solution inequality actually really does tell us everything about the values for x that make our original inequality true. So since you have some practice already with solving equations and we're using the exact same rules for inequalities, this is the only example problem that we have. Go ahead, pause the video, solve these inequalities the way you would equations. Make sure you are showing your balancing work or you could call it imbalancing work in this case, but make sure you're showing the operations that you were using. Uh, pause the video, solve these inequalities like you would equations. Remember the um, inequality signs, stay the way they are, come back when you are ready to see the answers. So in the top left, we have 3 times x is less than or equal to 21. We're going to divide by 3 because that leaves us with x is the inverse operation of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3, 21 divided by 3 is 7, and the inequality sign is preserved. x is less than or equal to 7. Every number less than or equal to 7 will give us uh, a circumstance where 3x is less than or equal to 21. In the upper right hand corner we're going to add 11 to both sides because that's the inverse operation of subtraction. We end up with x is greater than 26 and so as long as x is greater than 26 we take 11 away from x and we end up with a value that is greater than 15. In the lower left hand corner we see x divided by 6 so we're going to need to multiply. We have x then is less than 3, so as long as x is less than 3, x divided by 6 is less than 0 0.5. And finally, in the lower right-hand corner, uh, we have uh, x plus 5, so we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. We get x is greater than or equal to negative 8, and that tells us as long as we start with an x that is greater than or equal to negative 8, we can add 5 to that x and still have it be greater than or equal to negative 3. So that's most of what there is when it comes to solving these sort of basic one-step inequalities. We can obviously make it more complicated like we've done uh, before with some other things, uh, adding multiple steps to uh, inequalities. We can do some distributive property. But there are two things we want to consider going forward. One that you're going to deal with by the end of this lesson, the other that we're going to deal with in the next. And those two questions are, what happens if we multiply or divide by a negative number? Because if you remember looking at a number line, we looked at absolute values and we looked at the um, the orientation of numbers on a number line, there's a little bit of a mirror that happens at zero with positives and negatives. One is less than two, but negative one is greater than negative two. And so we're going to have to deal with that in some way when it comes to multiplying and dividing inequalities by negative numbers. And then, because there are all these numbers that are a part of the solution, can we find a visual way to show all of the solutions and all the possible values that are part of the solution for that inequality. Those, that second question is going to be the next video lesson that you're going to watch. This first one is something you'll deal with as a part of this lesson.